Okay, we've got the arrow on our mark. Now the technique that we want to use in bending is steady foot pressure all the time. So, we want to put steady pressure on, we'll just start bending our conduit. Now we're not going to get in a hurry, we're just going to work nice and smoothly. And my left hand is here just for balance right now. Let's talk a little bit more about deducts. On half inch conduit, the deduct on a 90 degree angle is 5 inches. On 3 quarter inch conduit, like what we just bent, it is 6 inches. On 1 inch conduit, the deduct for a 90 degree angle is a duct, which is 6 inches. And we subtract that from 10 and get 4. So we mark our pipe at 4 inches, place the arrow mark on 4, make our bend, and our 90 would end up being 10 inches long. So let's do that. We're going to look at a diagram of a plug now. The way the plug works, we've got our wire coming from our panel. <clears throat> the hot wire goes to the brass side of the plug. The neutral goes to the silver terminal on the plug. And we have a completed circuit here for the plug to work. We're going to look at how to wire a single plug now. So we have our power coming into our box right here, and we've already got our wires in place. Our ground wire is already grounded, and we have our neutral and our hot, and we've already stripped our wires and made our little hooks. Now we have our plug here, and the plug has a brass terminal, and that's where the hot goes. The silver terminal is where the neutral goes, and the green is where the ground goes. So very simply, we just put this together. It's very easy to, to learn, you just have to pay attention. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get the screws, to get the wire under the screw, you just have to work with it a bit. But I find if I'm doing trim work, and doing a whole bunch at the same time, I, I kind of get in the groove and they just seem to fall into place after I, I yeah. do it. What I want to do is put a wrapping of uh, some black tape around here. Okay, now, of course, we have to put our plaster ring on and put this together. So that's what we're going to do now. We'll put this all together and then we'll demonstrate how this plug nice. works. So now what we have left to do, we got the main feeder wires to put in and we have the shunt wires also. Now again, oftentimes the main feeder wires will be landed first, but in this case it worked out better for us to do them last. Okay, the next wire that I want to do is going to be the neutral. I want to get that out of the way. Now the neutral is going to land right here. Here's the neutral bus. And it's going to land in this lug. And we'll have to bend it up, and it's got to bend inside this bracket. Now, remember when you're bending conduit, there's a deduct when you bend a 90. Well, it's similar with wire. You can't bend it here because it will actually gain a little bit. So it's about four to six and even eight times the width of the wire on bigger wires when you bend it. So I'm going to go back at just a couple inches to make sure it's identified and it's easily identified and you understand which wire it is. Okay, so there it goes and our neutral there. Okay, so now we just take an Allen wrench trying to explain and maybe add a, a new point each time. Get it in there nice and straight. I see that's where I want to uh, want to cut it. And this I don't have to mark it. I can and you can see that once you get going and have some knowledge, you can make up a panel fairly rapidly and do a pretty nice and job. Oftentimes you're going to find out when you've got good technique, you go much faster than somebody using a lot more effort with bad technique. And that just seems to be how life works. So that's my philosophy lesson for the day. Okay, there's... Now, before we look at this fixture right here, and we have a hexagon and it has an H in that hexagon. Okay, now, we talked about this being an emergency light here. Now, if you follow this line down on your print, and we're going to go off our screen here, but just go down, just past the storage room, you'll see an F in a hexagon pointing to a light that looks like this. That's enough. Now, I asked you to look at B and F and H. Let's look at B with the hexagon. See we have the hexagons here with the with the letter in them. 
and that's the type of light fixture, so B as well. So when we look at our plugs, we have to make sure that we install them in the proper place. And we've already looked at this location before, and we're going to come back to it. Now remem remember, two. so that's one of those plugs. Let's go to our note 10, it's points here, and it says it's a dishwasher. And we have uh, a plug here, so one of those circuits is going to be for that dishwasher. But which one? We'll find that out. Let's go over here. So we're going to go to sheet E 5.1 right now and see what we can determine. So we're at sheet E 5.1. At the bottom of the page in the middle is the panel schedule for panel E5. Now, the circuits we need are concentrated in this area. So, we're going to take a close-up look at that area right now. This column right here is going to be our circuit numbers. And we're going to get into how to read panel schedules in detail a little bit later. Remember, we had our circuits 40 and 42. Four. Right here. Circuit 26 says it's a garbage disposal. We know that that's going to be a piece of equipment and it's going to go underneath the sink. That's why I pointed out the sink back on drawing uh, A4.1. So we know that we have to go into that cabinet right here. It was circuit 16, and it's a recept for a break room. That was the one that was shown above the countertop on sheet A4.1. Now what we're going to do, since, since all of these are in the same panel, we're going to put a two-gang box and put our switch Okay, so we're back to sheet E 4.1, back at the break room. So when I asked you to pause the video to see if you could figure this out, the, was your answer close to what we came up with? So again, we're going to look at it. This is going to be for the refrigerator, circuit 24. 26 will be for the disposer, garbage disposal, and the switch controls that. It's going to be in a two-gang box with circuit 16, which will be a GFI plug above the sink. 28 will be the dishwasher. 30 will be for the microwave. The next configuration we're going to show you on a three-way switch is when the power comes from the panel to a switch, then to a light, and then to the other three-way switch. So we have it drawn here like the first time. Here's the power coming to the first switch. Now we remember from the two-wire rule, again, that neutral, let's take the red here, and it goes into this junction box, but it's just going to wire nut. Now the black has to be a traveler in this situation, even though it's a black wire. We've already hit the switch, but the black must remain as a traveler here, and you're going to see why in just a little bit. Okay, so now we must take a three wire from the light down to the other switch. What we have left now is the white wire from the three way, and we have the hot wire to the switch. So those must work together. And that means that the white wire from the three-way is a switch leg. And if that's the case, we have to put a wrap of black tape around that switch leg to identify it. Let's do that right now. So it's identified as a switch leg. Okay, so now we know on this side, we know it's going to be a switch leg. So let's do that right now because we don't want any confusion, so we're going to do that now. Now we also know that on a three-way switch, a switch leg is connected to the common terminal. So let's go ahead and connect that right now. The common terminal is the one with the black screw, and we're going to use the, uh, the push-in. But before I do that, I'm just going to put a curly cue in it as well. And I so we finished with our makeup, and we've hooked up our power. So we're going to take one three-way switch and turn it, and the light comes on. And then the other three-way switch should turn the light off, and it does. And then this one should turn it back on, and this one turns it off. Now notice I've got one switch down and one switch up. If I put them both up, 